Public Places Committee. The recording secretary will take roll. Roll call in order by last name. Committee member Asdarian. Present. Committee member, member Faulkner. Absent. Committee member Nathanson. Present. Committee member Puentes. Present. Committee member Sayers. Absent. Vice Chair Kiefer. Absent. And Chair Baumgartner. Present. Thank you. Um, let the record reflect all commissioners are present with the exception of uh, committee members Faulkner, Sayers, and Vice Chair Kiefer. Thank you. Do we have a quorum? We do. Just squeaking it through. Yeah. Okay. I know. <laughs> Thanks. <Yeah. laughs> um, so public comments. This is the time when any person may address matters not listed on the agenda, which are within the subject matter of the jurisdiction. The public may comment on the agenda items when the item is called. Each speaker allowed three minutes. Are there any members of the public online that are desiring to make a comment, Kyle? We have no hands raised at this time. Okay, so no one present, no one here. Very good. So we have approval of minutes. We have three sets of meeting minutes to approve today. Copies have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Any comments? We're doing it differently this time. I'm not going to vote. So, new mm. thing. Yeah, I know. No. So, you're, I'm waiting for any, nothing problem. Okay, the minutes are approved as amended. We will now move on. As, as, as submitted. As, excuse as me. As yes, excuse me. I saw the wrong and it's word. Okay. We're going to move on to scheduled items. <laughs> We're rolling through this. Yeah. Okay. Um, I like that. Yeah, let's do it. Exactly. So, we are going to have a progress report on the strategic plan implementation and the annual work plan discussion, part one. So our staff will share a progress report on the strategic plan implementation and then open a first in a series of discussions about the 2023-24 annual work plan. Our recommended action is information and discussion. Great, thank you. Yeah. Um, this is uh, similar to what we did last year um, with our annual work planning process. So we're kicking it off, um, I think about the same time that we did last year. Uh, but the goal here is to see how we're doing with implementing our strategic plan this year and what our work plan was at the beginning of this fiscal year. So a reminder again that our fiscal years run June uh, sorry, July 1 through June 30th. So we're just about to wrap up the current fiscal year and start a new one. Um, so we're starting a process where we can review the work that we've been doing, um, look at what still needs to be done and kind of evaluate and assess, and then hopefully get to the point later in the summer where we're approving a new annual work plan for next this next fiscal year. So um, this, is, this slide is pretty much what I just talked about. It's really what we're doing today, starting with review. We're gonna be looking at our um, fiscal year accomplishments this year, um, and then our progress on our strategic plan implementation. We'll review our work areas and responsibilities, and then we'll kind of go in. So that's really what we're doing today. And then the next step in the process will be kind of an iterative planning process where we'll, uh, work on um, looking at what needs to be in our work plan this year, considering how we're doing with implementing our strategic plan, what are our continuing projects and ongoing programs, um, considering what has changed this year versus last year and what new opportunities there might be. And then, uh, and then once that process is complete, the committee will uh, approve an annual plan for 23-24, fiscal year 23-24, and then we'll start implementing that plan. Okay. So we'll start off by uh, kind of going over our accomplishments for this year. We actually did quite a bit this year, our kind of year coming out of COVID. Uh, I think this yeah. is our first full year of really doing projects again without too many major restrictions. So <laughs> that was a lot to do. <clears throat> we installed the Unum sculpture by Blessing Hancock in Courthouse Square and hosted a successful dedication ceremony. 
We installed a mural on the 5th Street parking garage titled Help Each Other Grow by Rough Edge Collective. Um, we launched the facade improvement program, including a partnership uh, partnerships with two nonprofits to provide free murals, mosaics, and other placemaking artwork to small businesses impacted by the pandemic. <clears throat> um, we entered into partnerships with several organizations to bring free public exhibits to the Finley Community Center and Person Senior Wing. Um, they're listed there, but they include our ongoing program, like the National Arts Program, um, as well as new partnerships such as with the Redwood Empire Chinese Association, the Office of Community Engagement, um, the Pom uh, San Rose Historical Society, Pomo Project. Some of those we've had um, exhibits with before, but slight, in a slightly different format this year. <clears throat> Continuing with our accomplishments, we hosted the Live at Juilliard concert series last year, last summer, summer of 2022, including free six free concerts in Juilliard Park attended by roughly 500 people each week. We launched Art Surround, a partnership with Creative Sonoma to provide grants to seven local artists or artist teams to produce nine temporary public art installations throughout Santa Rosa. We introduced and rebranded a comprehensive Out There Santa Rosa website, um, including a page for the public art program. Uh, and launched a new destination marketing campaign. We completed equity training with the Art and Public Places Committee hosted by Kimson Creative, including ongoing, ongoing mentoring with the committee task forces. We launched the arts engagements for the general plan update, uh, which was a partnership with Santa Rosa Forward with our planning uh, division, as well as with Kimson Creative. And those engagements um, are ongoing still, but were three different approaches. One is a coloring book um, to gather input from grades three through eight on the topics of health and environmental justice. Another one is a spoken word workshop um, leading into a music video, <clears throat> which will be re released later this summer, um, mainly based on input from um, SRJC students about their hopes and dreams for the future of Santa Rosa. And, um, and then a collaborative workshop with high school students uh, that created uh, the kind of installation project, which we'll talk more about a little later, uh, which was an event in Courthouse Square a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> So this slide doesn't read too well uh, at this scale, but um, this is essentially our uh, strategic plan implementation um, for this current year. And this report was generated as of May 17th. So uh, it's, a, it's already a little bit outdated um, as we kind of continue to move forward in terms of if more funds were spent uh, between then and now. Um, but it gives you a kind of a snapshot at how far we've gotten with some of the projects we, we undertook this year with implementing the plan. So our main categories of our strategic plan are community engagement and input, governance and administration, programming and projects, and PR and marketing. And so this spreadsheet shows the breakdown of, you know, where, where money was spent, with where uh, where we budgeted or what was anticipated and what has been spent to date so far this fiscal year. Um, and then this is, well, maybe I should, I'll pause there and we can, if there's any questions about any of our accomplishments or, or this, this page, uh, maybe now's a good time to just check in and yeah. then we can move on to the yeah. next section. So happy to answer any questions or if anyone has any feedback about anything. So we haven't spent any money in the top section yet. This community engagement, is that what it's saying? Yeah, I mean, no. The notes there that say adding to Kimson Creative contracts go uh -huh. work, 
that will take effect starting in our next fiscal okay. year. Okay, gotcha. So no, none of that has been like, there have been no specific costs Associated that we anticipated that associated with that area. That doesn't mean we haven't been working in certain ways mm -hmm. to accomplish some of those main goals as identified in our strategic plan, but in terms of like expenditures, right. they haven't specifically been right. um, addressed. <laughs> Well, it seems to me that we were, since this is 22, 23, we kind of started really working on some of that while we were still come, sort of coming out of that weird COVID period where there was a lot of hesitancy about yeah. in-person events and meetings and whatever. So Yeah, exactly. There, I think there's been a lot of talk about like open house type activities activities yeah. and doing more social gatherings and yeah, it hasn't quite I mean, I think that those are all still things that we can do and we can mm -hmm. start rolling out. It's more a matter of when when they were written up as something we should do, we couldn't even do them yet. And so mm -hmm. it's been slow to yeah, launch right. some of those things. Well, and and <clears throat> I served on the community engagement task force for this committee, but also for the um, UNAM project. And so much of what we, I think, would have done would have been like town hall meetings and focus groups and things that we would have done in person. Yeah. And, it, you know, at the very least, we would have had expenses for snacks or something, right? Right, right. exactly. But it's like we didn't do any of that. Everything was done virtually. Yeah. yeah. So the, and community engagement was really involved with the UNAM opening, but those expenses were part of that project, not Correct. specifically yeah, for community engagement Correct. wise. Okay. So. And the only thing, so if you go into the PR and marketing section, where we talk about ma maximize outreach and branded equipment for events, we use those that equipment for the UNAM, like the mm -hmm. tent, the tent that has mm -hmm. our name on it, the tables and tablecloths. We did invest in equipment for events for outreach that got used at the UNAM event, but they're more program wide, right? They're for use at right. other times too. So that they mm -hmm. did come out of a different budget. So they they support the community engagement yeah, yeah. and input kind of mm -hmm. section of this. The, the expenses just don't hit. In, in that, that category, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that explains a lot. And I think the other thing that looks like we're slowly making progress there is under the programming and project section. Yeah. There's two main project amounts there that, like, one is being held for a project that we don't have control over. So it, the timing of it may be even another year oh, really? know, down the road. I don't know exactly. Okay. So the, the pedestrian overcrossing oh, right. project. Okay. Um, so, I mean, that's that, that when we did our planning for last year, it, it was, we were in the planning phases of it and then it's now been kind of on hold. So, um, so that's, that's what that, those numbers there, the one that's hold for emergency response funds mm -hmm. and the Highway 101, those two item, line items for 50,000 each obviously make that category look a lot larger, um, yeah. but they're not things that we actively are pulling from right now. So uh, okay. I think we've actually made good, good progress on our projects. It just, those, those two things aren't happening currently. Right. I don't really know exactly how you budget, but what the things you don't spend, you know, that were obviously carry over, but mm -hmm. will that affect your budgeting? Will you have to like, will you budget for less the next year because you're pulling so much over? Or will that just yeah, eventually the, get to use? The, it all gets used, but essentially because our, the public art fund is one contained fund separate from the city's general fund. So all of the accounts that we have within our fund. So one is just for general public art. One was made specifically for the UNAM project. One was mm -hmm. there. So there's different like yeah. accounts or project keys. Um, in those types of keys, anything that is left by the end of that year, it just reverts back to the general fund, our fund, mm -hmm. not the general fund, mm -hmm. our fund. Our fund. It yeah. reverts back to just the general pot of money for the public art fund. 
Right. And so then if we know that project is still continuing and we'll use it again, you know, it needs to still be attached to that project. We can encumber funds or, or like earmark them for a project mm -hmm. in contracts. Um, and so that's one way to keep them attached or it's just in our, in our spreadsheets budgeting, knowing what they're going to be used for. But yes, we don't, no money gets lost in within the public art fund. It just rolls back and then we have access to it the year going forward. Mm -hmm. And when we anticipate how much will be left uh, at the end of a year, then yeah, we request to appropriate less funds because we know it'll still be left sitting there. Yeah. So it's kind of a process it's that kind you of have to check and that. see yeah. what's going to be left and then calculate. Yeah. So I'm curious as to the accountability in a particular area. So if, let's say you've got six, uh, 6,000 or whatever um, might be in the community engagement fund and you want to use that for PM, PR and marketing or some other use. Is that a, an administrative decision to move it or do is there some other level of um, reporting or accountability? Yeah, or yeah decision so if, if what, so this is what the, the column that says anticipated, mm -hmm. that's what this committee approved last year. Mm -hmm. And if, if something is different or needs to be changed, we would need to come back to the committee to have you approve oh. that it's so, different. So where are the... So it, I mean, yes, it's not... Where the, the oversight. The oversight of that, correct. Authority or yeah. whatever, yeah. yeah. And it's not Ooh, such the, power. The, <laughs> <laughs> the funds themselves aren't... Like this committee doesn't have the authority to actually appropriate the funds. That has to go to city council. Right. So this committee makes recommendations in what should be in our expenditure plan and approves the expenditure plan. And then the what we actually need appropriated in our budgets to do this work goes through the city's budget process and the council right. approves that. But they're not looking at this level of detail. They're looking yeah. at, oh, the public art fund needs this much more added to it this year from, yeah. from its... Re reserves. Wait, right. That's what they're approving. Right. So yeah. we're just basically signing off on what you bring to us and say, you know, well, this is how we're going to. That's how it should be divided distribute. up. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Yeah. So if there are things, and, and what this is based on is our strategic plan and the actual dollar amounts that we allocated through our strategic plan. So mm -hmm. this, this should essentially mirror what's in our strategic plan document in the in the, the back of it, there are several pages of like implementation guides um, and um, and expenditure uh, guide, guidelines, and and it, it this is essentially what that is. The, the only difference is that sometimes if we didn't get to something in one year, we'll like then add to you know combine the two years together and say, well, this is where we're at now with what should be spent on that. So. So we, we will talk more about this in our next discussion about this when we're talking about what should be in our next year's plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll have an, a, rev, a revised version of this that will be to, to date, like it'll be updated again. So you'll see how we actually finished the year um, with in terms of the numbers. So, um, so yeah, we, we'll definitely keep talking about it. Um, but yeah, if there are other questions or things that would be more helpful to see on here, I mean, we can definitely make adjustments to it. Okay. Um, so this is just that kind of, um, I don't know, flow chart yeah. diagram that I created last year to try to capture the complexity of all the different <laughs> program, uh, the work areas that kind of fall under um, Jessica and my, um, uh, yeah, work plans. So um, last year we kind of talked about, okay, well, what, what are the different roles and responsibilities? The purple things are main program areas. The green items are different funding sources and the blue items are like advisory or if, you know, um, uh, or like authorities, you know, boards like you, right? Um, some of them are advisory. APPC is more, more than advisory, but, um, but that's what that's meant to capture. And then the little red asterisks is, I think, are meant to capture 
at what points community engages with our program. Mm -hmm. So, um, so like our website out there, Santa was a website through our marketing and advertising, um, through our kind of just strategic plan engagement, um, in our community led projects at APPC meetings. I think that's, that's what the intention was is to signal where those kind of interactions can be. And then there's a lot of dotted lines because there's a lot of things that are connected. <laughs> so this is really just a refresher. And then this was what kind of came out of that a couple meetings into our uh, process last year was this kind of diagram that shows where the work of the committee over, overlaps with the actual program because they're really two separate entities that work together and have overlapping roles and responsibilities in those main areas um, that are in the middle there. So again, this is all just a kind of refresh from last year, but I think we made some good progress on trying to verbalize some of this or visualize it um, where we hadn't really spent the time to do that previously. So uh, and then this is kind of what I think we we land on in terms of where we start with um, thinking about our annual work plan every year is, well, for, 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 the, for right now, we have the implementation of the strategic plan. That's a major area of our work plan. So that is what is number one there. Um, and then those are the different categories and what we anticipate having as our like tasks in each of those areas. And then another main main area of the work plan is our, our continuing projects. So we'll have projects that we started this year that will continue into next year, like Arts Around, the Asawa panels, um, our general plan update engagements, our facade improvement program with the placemaking projects, Fire Station 5, which we haven't done much with yet, but we did start this year, so it technically will be a continuing project into next year. And then the Highway 101 project, which again, I don't know exactly the timeline for that, but it would be potentially continuing this year. Mm -hmm. And then we also have ongoing programs, which aren't really projects. They're just things we always do year to year. So they don't change that much. We always have rotating art exhibits of some kind. We always have our cultural events like Live at Juilliard. We have Out There Santa Rosa. And the asterisks here indicate that they're not, those programs are not funded by the Public Art Fund. So public art program staff are responsible for them, but they have separate sources of funding. That would be the same for the SAWA panels. That too, correct? Um, not necessarily? Yes, and yes and no. It had it did get an infusion of PG and E one time funds. Okay. Um, and I I suppose it could have an asterisk on it. Uh, you'll see later in our process that it will need some additional funding from the public art fund. Okay. Or we can talk more about that, but if that hasn't been approved yet by okay. you guys, so <laughs> <laughs> so yes, currently you're right. It should have an asterisk on it because it currently is not funded. Okay. By the program. That's good to know. Currently, the asterisk besides that asterisk and another. Yeah. So then we have our ongoing maintenance and conservation of the public art collection. Um, and I put two different things under that because we have maintenance of our items where we kind of know what needs to be done to those items. We have funding encumbered on a contract already. And then we have improvements to the ZAG uh, light installation, which um, I think will require additional funding above and beyond what we have norm budgeted in normal years. So there may be an additional request for funding for that coming to the committee as well. And then, oops, that is the wrong number. It should have a four there for new opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, but that's something that I think is like the, uh, the, the last main consideration or work area within an annual plan, uh, annual work plan is like, well, are there new things we should be considering? Mm -hmm. So again, to refresh, this is just the process that I kind of over, uh, over did an overview of earlier um, that we're reviewing our accomplishments, 
we're reviewing our strategic plan implementation progress, and we're reviewing our work areas and responsibilities. Um, and then we kind of go into a iterative plan planning process. So that's all that I have for today because I think we that's that's all we we needed to start this process. And I think yeah. like what will be uh, at the next meeting will be the next step, which is okay. Maybe what has changed? What new opportunities are there? Do we just keep doing what we're doing? I think that we, we probably need to present to you kind of an honest assessment of, well, if we're continuing everything we're still doing, what else can we do? <laughs> Is there room for anything else? So I think that that's something that we'll be working on to share with you. And then if there's any new priorities or if there's things in the strategic plan, I would encourage everyone to review the strategic plan again um, during this time because it, I think it's good to see well what still rings true like we wrote that in a very key mm -hmm. moment in history and there's still very important things in there but have things changed to the point where certain things are more of a priority mm -hmm. now um, right. should we like at our last meeting I know it was a priority to tackle our, our toolkits mm -hmm. and we are just now getting to that mm -hmm. at the end very end of this year so mm -hmm. it's like it it we didn't have the capacity to take it on earlier than we do now than we than now so I think that like considering all the things that that do fit under our area what you know what's the priority I think and that's mm -hmm. where the committee can really help shape what's in that work plan is prioritizing so Happy to answer any Great. questions yeah, or go over yeah. anything. There's no motion, so else. we can just um, take questions. Anyone have any? I'd like to see that um, slide again oh. that had the um, the Venn diagram sure. that showed in the middle, kind of what our responsibilities were. I just wanted. Yeah. I didn't. I wrote down annual plan, community engagement, but I didn't get that third thing. I never seen it kind of written like that. Maybe you showed that to us, but. Oops. Oh. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Project evaluation. Okay. Is that, I mean, that's obviously simplistic, you know, in terms of like, you know, just summarizing, but is that really the core of what you're really seeing us doing as a team um, in this space? This is what it felt, this is what, this is what felt right as of last year. And okay. things have shifted and changed a little bit. So, okay. I mean, if there's things, I think that it would be interesting to think about what, is that really how it went this year? <laughs> like, do you know okay. what I mean? Like, this is what we thought back last August right. or July, July, August, I think. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, well, okay, did, did, that, did that happen? I think we did work well together with our community engagements for projects like the UNAM, for mm -hmm. example, right. and the um, Fifth Street Parking Probably. Garage. Yeah. Pro you know, those were community engagement in terms of having a celebration, inviting people to an event for mm -hmm. a project. Um, the annual work plan, I think, is still a work in progress in terms of how we work together. But I think that in theory, we're bringing you stuff to respond to, but we want your input. We right. want you to help us prioritize and shape what the work plan is. Sure. Yeah. Um, project evaluation, I don't think we have a great system for that yet. I think yeah. we're still working on what that looks like. And I think the um, project um, development task force could spend some time thinking about what a project evaluation process could be that is a joint process between staff and the committee. What's the objective in, in that evaluation, in that evaluative process? Yeah, I think it's like, I mean, we, we, we ended up doing a, a um, we haven't really completed it, but we ended up doing a slightly new process this year with UNAM as an example, because we were already working with Kim's and Creative and their mentoring of the task forces, we had them include a conversation about how the UNA project went with all the task forces and with a goal to have them report back to the whole committee, the themes that came out of those conversations and areas for improvement or things that worked well, et cetera. So that, that will be a version of a project evaluation when it's complete, it just isn't complete yet. Um, in the past, I, I don't think we really had a formal process. I think it was kind of like a project was done and it was like, okay, great job, everybody. And we moved on. If, yeah. if there wasn't really a way, we, we've never developed a way to actually evaluate. So I think what, what my goals would be in a project evaluation would be to like kind of look at, well, how did, 
How did community engagement go in that process? How did interaction with the artists go in that process? How was the selection panel? Pro like each component that makes up that project, I think there should be questions developed to assess how successful it was. And if it, if there are certain criteria we could develop that help with that evaluation, such as like, did, did we receive enough community engagement to meet X, Y, and Z goals. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's like, I think that it's, it's a, it's comprehensive. It needs to be looked at comprehensively to, to figure out what, what makes a successful project. Mm -hmm. And each project is slightly different, but I think that there are probably some core goals or values that need to be addressed for every project. Yeah. But they would be those evaluations would sort of be weighted towards the procedural questions as opposed to aesthetic questions. Yes. I don't think that, I mean, yes, I don't think that the goal is to evaluate the artistic merit of the finished product. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully it already been addressed. What's that? I said, hopefully that had been addressed at some level. Yeah. I mean, I suppose process, that there could be, there is yeah, the there, there, there could be, that could be a component of it, but I think that, Unfortunately, I, I mean, I don't want to set up a system that then second guesses or or somehow negates the process that the selection panel went through, because right. the selection panels, that's their job is to. So so I guess like if there's a if a topic of the evaluation is the selection panel process, then you can capture feedback there about that, but it doesn't directly talk about the actual finished product. Yeah, right. But there, there are certain things that feed into that. For example, um, I think part of an evaluation that's really effective is, did we um, attract a, a pool of mm -hmm. sure. applicants yeah. where, where we got high quality proposals and we actually um, you know, had something to select from? Right. And then once the project is installed and completed and dedicated to the public, um, I guess in my experience is like, if you don't get any really negative feedback from the community, you go, yes, it's a success. <laughs> but you know, there were those, those times where you get significant um, you know, feedback from the community that you have to evaluate mm -hmm. and go, okay, why did this elicit this particular response. Mm -hmm. So um, I think uh, it would be good for the evaluation process to allow for that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In some ways, I think each of the teams, the committees that we have, the subcommittees could be integral to developing part of that evaluation, yeah, exactly. like from a lens mm -hmm. in a sense, mm -hmm. because, and also think, I think the speed and the kind of the proximity to the project is really important. Mm -hmm. If we're not talking about Unum until next year, mm -hmm. this spring, and we had like this, years long stretch out with just COVID, let alone mm -hmm. just the time since it was installed. Mm -hmm. We're losing a sense of yeah. the, you know, you just forget things, they just don't get right. recorded. Yeah. As well as I think that the selection committee, it would be really helpful to have them do some evaluation. Mm -hmm. If I said this and I responded, was I listened to? Was I, I mean, those kind of things. Yeah. Was, was I happy with how actual construction and fabrication happened? Was yeah. I, you know, th that sort of thing. Because I feel like when you, if I think you've probably all been on one um, of these. I mean, I've only been on one or two, but um, you, you really put a lot of time in and a lot of energy and heart and soul. And I know we were on Zoom, that was even more frustrating. So, yeah. but it'd be good to have that feedback. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's good for us to note that a project like Unum, which really was um, conceptually based in community input, right? It was supposed to be a, right. it, it was supposed to really emerge out of a community engagement process. And here we were in, you know, in the middle of COVID and we couldn't even have a session where the community could come and meet the artist and sort of have that interaction. So I think we can learn a lot from the process, but we also have, I think we have to give ourselves a lot of credit, yes. <laughs> you know, that yes. it turned out pretty darn good considering we had so many obstacles. Yeah, so that's exactly the type of thing that I think we can dive into a little bit further next mm -hmm. discussion is like yes. prioritizing the things that we need, right? So if we need a project evaluation, 
process. Yep. Who, how can the committee support that? Each mm -hmm. task force could, you know, do some piece of it, right? And yes. then, yeah, it gets done collectively. So I think that's yes. Mm -hmm. um, that's a great approach. And then I think the other areas of of the work plan can be looked at that way too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I'm wondering um, that the project selection process doesn't end up in that that combined area um, where the diagram yeah, 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 that, that like that that sliver of, of, yeah. of the Venn diagram. Yeah, because it seems to me that staff has a pretty significant role in the selection process, even though the vote is actually taken. Do you, mean the, you don't mean the selection of the art artist or artwork. You mean like what project gets done? Like what, what well, exactly do you mean? Oh, I, I was thinking about actual projects and the selection of the artist, the proposal that um, is. Um, no, staff doesn't have any role in that. It's a selection panel, 100%. We just facilitate. We don't have a vote. Oh, I know. I'm, oh. I guess, uh, but, but because because you facilitate that vote, you have a role. I guess it, it, from how I view it. Um, so you see that might move into the middle because we both have some overlap. Right, because, yeah. I mean, because the conversation is happening with committee members who have a vote, who are voting members, but also mm -hmm. staff who are presenting and, and facilitating the, you know, the discussion. So that's a pretty significant role. I see I mean, what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, I'd, I'd be more interested in whatever, what your questions were and what your concerns and stuff, because Anne and I did with mm -hmm. um, Kinsum Creative, we're starting to work on the call to artists, the proposal, mm -hmm. um, the application process and stuff and how to revamp that. Mm -hmm. And, um, how to after doing the equity training how to apply that to the application process and how to make it more accessible and um, to our community and actually attract more people within our community and, and to yeah. do the process so um i know we were we did start working on that with um nico that's good yeah, yeah i think that I, I think it could move into that center area. I think that the reasoning or the thought behind how it's divided out here is like, so under our public places committee in the bottom project development and project selection are under the committee's responsibility. Mm -hmm. The way that I feel like it's captured or was attempted to be captured under the program is just project management of projects. Because yeah. we consider that part of the project management is facilitating the mm -hmm. artist process, selection mm -hmm. process. But I, I, I can see that that's not super clear, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, right. um, an outside view other than in my head. So, um, <laughs> so I think that that we can definitely shift that to the center. Yeah, and I mean it's not a criticism or any you know big deal. It's just an observation that. You know, maybe there is more of a shared uh, participation in that process. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. I mean, I think we'll continue. Yes. This really was meant to be the starting point for that. And so, again, I think the the requests are for the committee members to review our strategic plan, um, specifically mm -hmm. kind of the implementation sections of it and see what falls out to in terms of, well, we haven't done this yet. This should be a priority. Um, and then, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to prepare the packet for our next meeting a little bit more in advance so that you have time to review. It's always hard for me to meet the deadlines to get yeah. you the, um, information ahead of time, but I think it's always more helpful, obviously, to have more time to look at what the mm -hmm. slides are for the. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions guys about this? Or I ask for a public comment. Is there any public comment on Zoom? Sure. Are we can even check real quick. Is anybody actually I out there? Is anyone there? <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask. I sure, there are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So seeing none of those, we'll bring it back here. Um, you guys have more things you want to present to us? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is for, uh, let's see, will you call the item 5.2? Oh, are we going, oh, I thought there was something else in yeah. this one. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, that's it. All right. Um, 5.2, program and project updates. The staff will present updates on current programs and projects. Um, this is information only. So Tara and Jessica. Oh. Okay. I've got our program and project updates. Um, I will start off with Live at Juilliard. We announced the lineup last week. Um, and we also this year newly have it on our Out There Santa Rosa website, which is kind of flashier than our city website. Um, of course, it's there too. And um, we're also getting materials printed, so we'll have those for you at the next meeting. Um, our lineup, uh, I'll send this all to you, but just so you get to know now, is going to be the Real Sarahs, the King Street Giants, Burroughs and Dilbeck, Erica Abram, and the Eclectic Soul Project, and the Dylan Black Project. So. And we've got food vendors every other week, too. That's exciting. Vendors of food. Oh, I'm sorry, food vendors. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Yeah. I was figuring that yeah, last, year, <laughs> yeah, last year it was really hard to get confirmed food vendors. So. Yeah, it was the perfectly wrong timing coming out of COVID. And yeah. Food vendors were hit so hard. I know. That's super. It's great, yeah. though. It's got to be a huge ad. Yeah. yeah. Food. Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> I've never seen mom's food because I've only seen the ones during COVID. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, we had, what, last you're maybe three of the six states have yeah, food vendors. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Which, <laughs> which, you know, okay. certain people were like, oh, where's the food? Yeah. And then yeah. the next week they were like, oh, I brought food and there is a food vendor here. <laughs> <laughs> so you never know. Yeah. But this year we'll have one every time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. It's gonna, yeah. It's going to be Sita's Kitchen and Sushi Shobu that are trading off. So it'll be sushi bowls. Oh, so it's just the two and, different ones. And then the okay. next, the other. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so moving on to Arts Around, that's the project or, mm-hmm. that we're partnering with Creative yeah. Sonoma. So I've got updates on all the different seven artists or artist groups. Um, one has some stuff going on and their project's on hold right now, so we're not sure about that one. Um, but Barbie Watts is going to be installing her water catchment sculpture. Uh, that's going to be in the City Hall the demonstration garden for um, drought tolerant plants. Hopefully in the next couple of weeks, she'll be installing that. So I can email you all when we have a, an actual date for that. Um, Nicole Jones, who was created a native edible and medicinal plant garden at Escolar. She held her workshops there. She said they went great. Um, kind of a cool thing about this project is that the garden is going to live on. So. That will continue. And she said that the native community that she worked with was particularly into and grateful for the project. Um, Danny Burleson is our other artist who has a project at Escolar. She's gonna be holding a writing workshop in early June and she's gonna have a big blowout reception chapbook release and that's gonna be on August 5th. Or around then. <laughs> um, once we get that totally nailed down, we'll invite you to that too. Kristen Troop is still creating her project. She's doing a decal walking tour of local activists. Um, and she's done a ton of community engagement for this project, like several interviews per, per person that she's representing. Um, so she wants to have her launch hopefully at the library and then they can, she can invite anyone who's still living, who is an activist that she's featuring to be there. Um, and then we would go and walk towards a couple of them and check them out in person. Um, the idea on the day of that or, or the time. It's the yeah. Uh, this summer. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of, good. No, it's good it? yeah. We've got the three muralists, MJ Linda Lawyer, Josh Lawyer, and Mario Quijas. They're all ready to install murals on the museum and then also at HD Barber on Sebastopol Avenue. Not quite sure of the exact location. Um, anyways, they're kind of waiting on us. As soon as the city has a contract for them, for the building owner to sign, they're ready to rock. And hopefully that will be soon. 
So um, yeah. uh, MJ and Josh, um, they turned to, it's working out that there's actually three murals happening. Um, two place. two on our museum and then one across the street. Yes. So I just want to mention it because Art Surround and um, the Facade Improvement Program are both part of this package and, yeah. and um, cool. just want to say thanks so yeah. much to the city and the county and yeah. um we got some additional funding from the vintners foundation and yeah. uh Great. it's and tara thank you for hooking us up Great. just want to you know say it say it publicly yeah. for anybody yeah. out there. and uh the first of, of the three murals is completed uh yeah, it's on it the great. 7th street facade so good. yeah it doesn't really look great, great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it does um, and uh, B Street side is supposed to be done this month, I believe. We hope. We hope. <laughs> we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're supposed we're to get our so. agreements approved for use tomorrow. So okay. keeping our fingers. I just hate to say that word tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> we really hope so, though. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think the parking garage across the street. Yeah. Is yeah. In a few months. That'll be down the line. Yeah. yeah. So. No, that's yeah. all. It's so exciting. Yeah. 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 <laughs> to very cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then our last Art Surround project, you might have seen it when you walked in. Um, Julian Bellotti and Anna Wiziarde are gilding the native rose on the towers at the center of the city hall um, courtyard there. And at the end of the meeting, we can look at their progress, but they did one on the inside courtyard and then one facing Santa Rosa Avenue, which you can see from Santa Rosa Avenue. Um, the one on the inside is going to come all the way down and they're planting some native roses at the base there. So that's going to happen this next week. And then their celebration reception party is not going to be until August 23rd. Um, and that will be 4 to 6 p.m. in the courtyard here. We'll send out invites when we have, you know, for sure dates and stuff. Well, that dates for sure. Um, <laughs> okay, and <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> uh, next up, I've got our rotating exhibits. Uh, still up at the Finley Center is the Lowrider Lifestyle Exhibit. We had the reception yesterday. It was super well attended. Um, the exhibit itself is for local photographers that do Lowrider photography. And for the reception, a lot of them invited their own car clubs and other local car clubs in the area. Um, the public art program teamed up with the Office of Community Engagement on that. So Office of Community Engagement, they invited all the different car clubs to show more of their, they call them historical artifacts, like their plaques, t-shirts, and some of them brought like magazines from the 80s and stuff that they were featured in. Really cool, lots of history there. Um, that shows up through the end of this month. And then just across the courtyard at the person senior wing, the Becoming Independent art show is still up there. And that's going really well. They're having sales um, come through for that and stuff. So you can check that out through the end of the month as well. And just um, to highlight, that's during the weekdays. Yeah, Monday yeah. through Friday. Just only that, yeah. yeah. Great, that they're open, good. Yeah, that's the only time they're open to the public. Yeah. And then lastly, I wanna update you on the Small Business Support Program, which is the facade improvement grants and the placemaking murals. Um, that is the, that's where we're partnering with the two nonprofits, Art Start and the Mural Project. So with all the businesses that applied, we're working with 20 total. Um, all of those businesses will be paired with either Art Start or the Mural Project and, or they already are paired. Um, 14 of those businesses are getting a facade grant and also wanted um, placemaking. Mm -hmm. And six of those businesses just wanted straight up public art. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Is there a timeline for that? Well, um, that is the same contract that we're waiting on. Okay. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so I tomorrow. Um, yeah, we can get going on the public art ones right away. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're just waiting on that. And to our credit, Tara and I submitted these contracts long ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Months ago. So, yeah, just takes time. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will continue with some updates on our conservation and maintenance. Um, the painted tile mural at the Transit Mall um, downtown 
uh, titled Live Oak Lives On, uh, was cleaned and stabilized recently. It gets a lot of wear and tear, um, especially along the bottom where it meets the sidewalk. And so next year we may want to pursue additional funding for a stainless steel kick plate along the base um, mm -hmm. so that they don't, our conservators don't have to keep replacing chipped tile and other tile losses along the bottom edge. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise it holds up pretty well to cleaning and, and all of that. It's just that bottom edge. And then the sculpture installation at Fremont Park, the Cancer Survivor Plaza um, sculpture mm -hmm. um, has deteriorated substantially over, over the years that it's been there. Um, and we have cleaned it a few times and it really may at this point be an appropriate time to consider deaccessioning it uh, permanently. Um, one of the figures, bronze figures was actually stolen. So it's missing a bronze figure completely. And it, uh, some of the components of it are not bronze. The figures are all bronze and the plaques are bronze, but the um, archways that the figures are, are coming through as a symbolism for um, uh, surviving cancer. Um, they are made out of like a foam material that's coated in a kind of plastic latexy mm -hmm. kind of, I'm not sure the exact materials, but it's, it's very in very bad shape. It's really deteriorating. It looks pretty bad. It's peeling and the structure itself isn't stable anymore. So um, it, it was not a project commissioned by the public art program. We kind of adopted it or inherited it many years ago. Um, it was a kind of a partnership between the Parks Department and the Block Cancer Foundation, Block Family uh, Foundation, who, who put these monuments all over. It's not a unique piece of art. It's, a ser it's in a series of several that are uh, found throughout the U.S. in cancer survivor plaza, plazas. So um, we've contacted uh, the foundation and tried to find out what their wishes would be about the piece itself. Mm -hmm. um, and we may offer, if the pieces, if the piece itself is approved to be deaccession, we may offer the components of it back to them um, for, for them to take back ownership over it. But, um, but that will be on a future agenda for you to discuss uh, if, if there's a recommendation to do that. But that's kind of where it's headed right now, given its current condition. Um, a couple questions. Do you know when, when that was installed? Um, I don't have that number right, that date in front of me. My Maybe. recollection is like, no, it was like early 2000s, oh. I believe. Um, another, I mean, this is a little out there maybe, but um, I wonder if it might be possible to put out a, like an RFP to artists to engage with the remnants of that sculpture at some point. If that would, I don't know, if the foundation would have to approve that or something, but that might be an interesting kind of springboard for yeah. Uh, I think it determines, kind of yeah, it determines like, so when, when an item is deaccessioned formally, the process is that the committee has to uh, recommend that that's the action that's taken. Uh -huh. And then it actually has to go to city council. That's what our policy oh, says. Wow. So any items that are permanently deaccessioned, meaning we don't want them anymore, period. That's, that's what that really means. Uh -huh. uh, goes, would go to city council for approval. If they approve that, then technically we can't gift the items to anyone. We, they have to be like put up for surplus. Uh -huh. And the only exception to that is we can offer the items back to the original artist mm -hmm. or artist family or state. And, I, and in this case, I think it would re revert back to this Block Family Foundation. Otherwise it goes to auction, is that what you said? Yeah, it goes, <laughs> it's essentially surplus city property and then it goes through an auction process because we can't <clears throat> gift public huh. funds to any one organization or person. Uh -huh. <laughs> so the, so if we don't, so, so that's what ex the deaccession process would look like. If we don't actually formally deaccession it and somehow we decide that we want to turn it into a new project, uh -huh. we could potentially go down a different path, but I'm not sure that then we want to still have ownership over it. See, if we do that, we own it still. Mm -hmm. Right. And that means we're still responsible for its care, its placement, maintenance. So but the, it's a conversation that hmm. the committee would need to have in terms of what resources we have to do that type of project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And let's say um, it goes to auction. Mm -hmm. What happens to the funds? I don't know the answer to that. I think it just is like 
they go through an auction process. They, there's a couple different companies that I think the city has contracts with. And I think the funds just go back into the city's general fund, but I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know that 100%. I'd like to look into that because um, public art is different than let's say um, artwork that might be in a museum collection, mm -hmm. but the ethics of museum mm -hmm. collecting mm -hmm. um, very specifically states that um, any items that are deaccessioned from a muse and, and generally we would deaccession because we don't want the work any longer usually not because it's been falling apart outdoors but that could be the case if yeah. it's in an outdoor sculpture garden or something but that the funds have to go back into the collection mm -hmm. um and there are very strict rules around that mm -hmm. so um, they were loosened up um, recently. It used to be that if you deaccessioned work, you could only use the funds to acquire new work, um, to accession new works for the collection. Now it's expanded to um, you can use the funds for collections care, for you know conservation, or or um, you know the care care and management of a collection. But um, you can't put it back into like we if we do accession something we can't put the funds into our general operating fund. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. I don't. I can look more into that, and I think that the committee could also develop a more substantial deaccession process. It's only mentioned very briefly in the public mm -hmm. art policy, and it essentially says what I said that the committee can decide or or can can discuss and recommend that an item is deaccessioned then it goes to city council for approval. That's really all it says. It doesn't talk too much in detail about it. Yeah, I think it'd for be interesting to ha actually have the rules state that the money goes back into the public art yeah. fund. I, I agree with that. I think that this one, this situation is slightly complicated because we didn't, the public art fund didn't put any money into it originally getting it here. Uh, and it became an item in our collection kind of through default. Like, like <laughs> no, no, you know, like it's a, it, it, yeah, it, it's a, it's an odd, it's, it's an outlier for sure. If like something like Unum ever needed to be deaccessioned, for instance, I can't imagine that we, the committee, whoever's on it at that point would just approve it going to auction. Do you know what I mean? So I think in the absence of having the policy though, there there's definitely a good good reason to develop something, something stronger. I think this might be a really kind of an exciting opportunity to get it you know to, to to find an artist who's interested in questions of kind of bureaucracy and the um, intersection between you know sculpture and municipalities and mm -hmm. develop something that really could be probably very um, inexpensive from the perspective of the city mm -hmm. and, and and might kind of offer us uh, an unusual lens on you know, how those processes work and, you know, how we might maybe make uh, productive adjustments to those yeah. systems. Well, I think that yeah. well, okay. I'll have to put um, this item for uh, for more conversation on an upcoming agenda because we shouldn't have too much more conversation about it now. But I think that um, looking at that as an option can definitely be a part of that conversation. I also need to make sure that I'm bringing all the actual correct information about like it's it's yeah. it, the foundation, because when the city, I believe that when the city accepted it from this foundation, there was some kind of agreement as to how it was used. Yeah. And I don't know if we actually have the ability to repurpose it, right. given what that agreement was. So there might be more nuance to it because of that situation, mm -hmm. but. Um, we can, I'll, I'll, I can bring all of that when we have it actually on an item, uh, on an agenda. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay, so then let's see our Asawa panel update. Um, the, we have finally, the public art program has finally provided all requested renderings, engineering calculations, dimensions, and stamp drawings to the fountain contractor. Um, there's a long time coming to get all of that to the standards that was being requested. But we have done that. Um, and so then the next steps are for the fountain contractor, which is through the Hugh Futrell Corporation, uh, to actually submit the plans for the fountain itself. 
Um, those plans will have to be approved by the city and then they will have the green light to start construction. I don't know, I don't have an estimate on that timing yet. Um, but once they do start construction, um, it is anticipated that the construction to build the fountain would take about five months. And then once the once the fountain is built, then the bronze artwork panels will be installed. And the foundry that is doing the art portion of this project um, should be able to provide me with a timeline of when they'll actually have the bronze panels ready for installation. But they, it, it, it's kind of like each process is working parallel, but they have to connect at certain points. So we're hoping that the timing <laughs> connects again at the appropriate time so that the fountain is done and the art panels are ready to be installed within um, a reasonable time frame. So, um, but again, like I said, we, there's still no start date known that I know of yet for the actual construction of the fountain. Could you state again where that is, the location geographically? Oh, that's in Courthouse Square. Sorry, the no. south side of Courthouse Square near 3rd Street. Great. Uh, okay, in terms of an update on the fire station uh, 5 public art project, I've mentioned before that we have an opportunity to be involved with a new public art project, site-specific project for a new fire station being built in Fountain Grove that is to replace one that burned down in the Tubbs fire. It's not in the same location as the one that burned down, um, but it is to replace that same fire station, fire station five. So currently fire station five is in a temporary location on Parker Hill Road. This new permanent location would be at the southwest corner of Fountain Grove Parkway and Stagecoach Road. And um, and so they, the fire department and public works, the whole project team, they're working with um, a design build firm to design and build the structure. And we're working on uh, locating or identifying exact options for where public art could be incorporated within the site plan. Um, and so we're working on drafting a project plan and an RFQ. And so that will come to the committee um, for review very soon. They, right now it's being reviewed by, by the fire department. Um, and then um, the project development committee, Nathan and Kristen um, will be looking at it and assisting with finalizing it. And then it would come to the whole committee for review. And then the artists in the general plan update. Um, I mentioned that a little bit in our uh, previous item in terms of what is what we've accomplished this year and then what's still coming up. Um, but I just wanted to shout out to Kimson Creative and Brianna um, Hendren and Erica Lutz for doing such an amazing job at the May 21st event. And thank you to Anne and Lisa for attending and being there that day. Um, we had our public art booth set up in the square and there was a, um, a um, really good kind of steady stream of people throughout the day interacting with these large scale puzzle pieces that the artist created that had imagery and were in the shape of items that came out of their um, workshops they did with high school students about uh, the future um, for kind of environmental justice and housing in San Rosa. And um, yeah, it was great. It was music. There was a lot of families came by. There was interactive things that you could do for smaller kids. You could work together with uh, teams of people to move the larger puzzle pieces together. There was a whole wall where you could put sticky notes, giving your own input on what um, environmental justice, health, housing issues. Um, so it was a really nice, really nice event. Yes. And then our um, APPC task forces, um, we, Jessica and I have been working with Kim's and Creative to review the progress that they've made working with the task forces this year. Um, and then presenting back to the full committee an update on kind of the next direction for those task forces. So prior to that meeting, you should all receive an outline that kind of goes over what each task force is um, objectives are and what kind of the, the deliverables will be um, based on the kind of the work that's been done so far. So that that's coming up and we'll have a fuller conversation about that next at the next meeting. 
So that's a lot of project <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot. But we're done now. <laughs> Sorry. Any questions from actually public comments on oh, this? Dial yeah. anyone still there? Um, person chair. Okay. <laughs> no hands raised on Zoom chair. Thank you. Um, how about anyone here? Any questions for Tara about Jessica? This last things that we shuttled through. That was very thorough. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You give us lots of info. Yeah. We're all going to be quizzed and everything. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the committee member reports. Everyone is willing to make comments um, or announcements. If you're, we did this last time. Do you have anything going on this time for the city stuff? Things you're aware that are coming up organically and planned or things you want to raise up to the public and to this team? Anyone want to highlight anything or comment about before we go to the task force reports. Isn't there a new spinster? Isn't that the quilt artist? Isn't that opening tomorrow? Yeah, there's a quilt artist reception. Her name's Sable Regalia. Yeah. yeah. Um, she does these pretty amazing psychedelic quilts that will all be up at Spinster Sisters. And the reception reception's tomorrow evening, five to seven, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Also, next Sunday is the Railroad Square Music Festival, mm -hmm. which is all day long. Yeah. Is it Kristen working on that too? Isn't she somehow involved? I don't know. She, um, like she knew she a lot about She volunteered it. yesterday to collect funds and stuff. And then I think her partner, he also was volunteering. Um, okay. So they had some direct connection. Yeah. I think That's that cool. she, she also works with Shady, um, Shady Oak Barrel House now. And I think they're hosting an after party. Okay. Oh, so the one that's kind of spilling mm -hmm. over there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, that's good so that's two that. days. It's just Sunday. All day Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Feels like two days. <laughs> Are, you guys in that involved? Are you guys really involved with that? <laughs> um, out there, Santa Rosa and the city um, community promotions funding is sponsoring the event or, or providing event support, I should say. So we're involved kind of through that. Um, and out there, Santa Rosa will have kind of a booth slash wandering presence there <laughs> of some kind. Um, so, but not specifically public art stuff, yeah. it's more Excellent. out there stuff. Yeah. Great. So the museum will also have a presence at the uh, Railroad Square Excellent. Music Festival. Um, we're, we'll have a booth with uh, hands-on uh, activities, primarily for children, but or for children of all ages. <laughs> children and art. Um, uh, but um, unfortunately, I won't be there because um, we are also um, that very same afternoon hosting a um, celebration of life for the artist Jack Steppen. For, uh, so for anybody who knew Jack, um, actually kind of sad. He, 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 he was 89 when he passed. So, you know, he lived along, but uh, unlike Bruce Johnson, where that was a very difficult uh, mm -hmm. celebration of life to go to at Luth Burbank Center just mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Um, but on a happier note, um, uh, the new um, abstract painting exhibition, uh, Nature Abstracted, um, opens at the Museum of Sonoma County on June 17th. Um, two of the three artists are Sonoma County based, mm -hmm. which is fun. So um, anyway, um, one for each of you. And, Good, uh, thanks. So I brought you all um, you. announcements for the exhibition. So I hope you'll come by. Um, we will have the museum um, open for free to the public, um, our regular hours that day from 11 to five and reception with the artists from three to five. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. I also went to an um, afternoon opening, oh, gosh, I'm trying to think if you don't know what it was. It's right on the corner of um, like E Street and maybe like seventh or ninth when um there's like a sonoma power or sonoma mm -hmm. clean power mm -hmm. sonoma clean power, clean power mm -hmm. which i really didn't know much because i don't know that much about these things yet but someone just grabbed me and said come mm -hmm. and then it was they had sort of had a curator come in and put in art like but it's, it was interesting in that um 
they were doing something like this. I thought that they actually hired this woman. It's, it felt very um, kind of connected to something like that would be at the Sebastopol Center or something. Mm -hmm. I felt like many of the people were actually exhibit there, back mm -hmm. there, or some different that were, I didn't know all artists, but a lot of them, there was a lot of women and one man, but they artists were there. They had a reception. They totally like had a big party thing. And um, it's a really beautiful space and it is public, um, but it doesn't take pump city funds the way you may have it on your power bill. You can opt for clean power. Mm. You can pay a little more and they are, they have other sources of getting the electricity that you get. I don't know if you do that on your own bill. We actually do opt for it, but it's just, um, that's where the money comes from. But anyway, this just to say that I don't know if you're aware of that and that, that's interesting that they were doing that. Yeah, the um, person they hired, Vicki Comfer, who curated it, was the arts coordinator when I was hired. So oh, interesting. She was, was yeah, I met her briefly, but I didn't. Yeah, interesting. I It was just a presentation. And I don't know how open it gets or how many people can get in there because mm -hmm. it's obviously private offices, but. It was pretty big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the space. Cool. It's also art at the source. This yeah. Oh, one more week. One, one more week. Oh, one more weekend. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I'm not <laughs> so used to being <laughs> passive at these moments. <laughs> On it. Okay. On, Thank you. Okay. Now each task force has the opportunity to provide updates. Would anyone like to go first? I like the um, just our uh, you and I our update with the last what we were doing was working on with um, Nico and that was um, you know brainstorming how we could use the um, the equity training that we had and apply it to the application process, the call to artists and how we can make that more accessible to our local community and uh, attract more people. Great. Um, community engagement has not met and um, Melanie is no longer um, yeah. on the APPC mm -hmm. and uh, over that task force. So I guess have to regroup. I know, you do. <laughs> I think when we address the um, whole kind of structure of each group um, next at the next meeting, mm -hmm. we'll have an opportunity, I think, to either ask people they want to switch committees or just assign yeah. our new member to the engagement. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great idea. Okay. Yeah, that's good. What you guys, Nathan, did you have any? Well, I, I, we, we had a brief exchange about setting up a meeting mm -hmm. and um i think we haven't set a date i don't think we've said it yet but mm -hmm. it's probably what it's in the next couple weeks i think next yeah. week maybe mm -hmm. yeah um we were going to try to meet nathan Kristen, and i to look at the uh, project plan for that fire station project yeah mm -hmm. oh cool yeah i like that that's great okay any public comments about these Kyle? chair no hands raised at this time thank you appreciate it so we'll move on to the next one. This time is reserved for the staff to provide a briefing, briefing on issues of interest. No action is will be taken except for the possibly place a particular item on a future agenda for consideration. Great, I, I do have um, a brief item to share today. This could have fit under, oops, let me get the right window open. It could have fit under my project updates, but it's slightly outside of actual specific public art program mm -hmm. um, projects. It's out there Santa Rosa website, but I wanted to quickly show that. I know I showed that when we first launched it, um, but I wanted to share it again because it has a new page that we've created specifically for the public art program so that um, we can send people here to get their information um, about what we're doing as a slightly more engaging um, experience than the city's website, and uh, it also introduces folks to the whole website. So this is the this is the whole website that you can see um, when you go to out there Santa Rosa .org. Um, You can search by these categories, and you can also search by neighborhood. This is one of the most exciting things about. Our website is this map and the ability to search by neighborhood. So you can also click on if on the map itself and it will take you to that section of the website. So um, 
So if you haven't explored this website, mm -hmm. I encourage you to do it. It's pretty fun. But just for the way down. Oh, all the way down. Sorry. Okay. This is how we're looking incorporating. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even checked this out yet. We have them add this footer um, so that we're promoting Live at Juilliard right here on this Wonderful. page. Mm -hmm. right. okay. And if you go to read more, it will take you to this page which shows oh, um each each, each, band, week. each yeah. week yeah nice and this is just so much more exciting than what we can do on our city site and more engaging with photos oh, good. and stuff yeah 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 and it links back to the city's website as well so okay Even so we can way. use that footer if we have nice. something we have going something on, to put yeah. on. Oh, that's very cool yeah very good nice. okay. mm -hmm. Um, okay, and then this, if you go into art, the first, um, the first one on in, in here is our public art program website. So mm -hmm. this is now a dedicated page for the city's public art program. It talks about what public art is, mm -hmm. um, and then the committee. And then if you can click more, find out more, um, takes you to, you know, the site on the city's website that talks about when meetings are, how you get agendas, mm -hmm. um, gives a slight update about things we're working on, just small little things, Ruth Asawa, a little blurb about that, arts around. Um, this link sends you to Creative Sonoma so you can find out more about the whole program. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a section for recent projects as well. So folks can see what we've been up to. And then our art exhibits. Hey. <laughs> Go, Jessica. Great. Nice oh. work. You know. And yeah. then our current opportunities with our facade improvement, placemaking. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's that's really what the main point of sharing that website was to show you the public art page and library tree art page, um, just so that you can see. That. But there's lots more to explore here. You can go into any of these categories and see um, just some really cool local Santa Rosa stuff going on. Oh, wonderful. And each one that you might click on will take you to a page about that mm -hmm. venue or artist. And the goal is that it's, it's categories by neighborhoods. You could find it if you searched by neighborhood as well. Um, and we really just want to direct people to that place. So mm -hmm. then there's just a short little quote about why it's so out there and then a website mm -hmm. link or, or some link to mm -hmm. get to that place. And so which that's, department's putting this together? Like which one is overseeing the- That's us. You guys are specifically, yes. yeah. I didn't know if it was like- No, Out There Santa yeah. Rosa now falls under the kind of the public art program. So oh. it's, um, yeah. It's Jessica, myself, with Raisa's input as well. Great. And are you using and a we, graphic designer to do yes, some Yes, we that? have hired an awesome design firm called Studio B. Oh, um, and okay. she's, yeah. she's, she and her team have really helped us get this new brand, this new look. They've developed this whole website structure. Mm -hmm. um, they've worked with local artists to kind of make sure that we're representing each neighborhood um, through actual people and artists and businesses who who are in those neighborhoods. So um, B, B, the main, um, the owner of the business has um, collected a group of people she calls uh, outside insiders. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> out there, outside, <laughs> out there, San Rosa, out there insiders. So, um, so that they're, they're kind of like ambassadors for each neighborhood or each kind of like area that we're representing here. And this, this, we really talk about this whole campaign as kind of like an insider's guide to Santa Rosa, mm -hmm. um, but focusing on kind of the more urban, um, kind of weird, uh, out there uh, experiences that you can find in Santa Rosa. Okay. So um, that is all I have to share for Excellent. department reports. Okay. I, I think it would be really good to keep Santa, Santa Rosa weird and getting weirder <laughs> because you know um santa cruz has prided itself on you know being weird and it's not weird anymore hmm. it's like so touristy and kind of mainstream um 
And it's like, quit saying that. You guys aren't <laughs> weird anymore. Yeah. It's a lot weirder here than it is there. <laughs> well, that's good. That's, we've, we've made it above <laughs> Santa Cruz on the weird one. <laughs> okay, anything else there? We could move on to the future agenda items. That's number eight. Any discussion about something that we would place on a future agenda? Something you might want to think about talking? Or we also have a list below um, the private partnerships, how APPC can support community programs, budget for visiting artists and lectures, heritage walk. Um, we could move those up to the agenda. We could vote to do that. Is that a vote if we did that? Yeah. yeah. So Tara, we, we had that meeting um, with Laura Lee and kind of connected her project to the Heritage Walk. Did mm -hmm. we want to, should we expand this um, agenda item or move it up? Um, yeah, um, I feel like there's, there's probably more to talk about now that Flora Lee has brought the, another community member who actually was on Art and Public Places Committee many years ago um, had a similar idea to the Heritage Walk idea that we've since met about Jeff, the museum, um, myself and her to try to see if we can combine efforts on that. So um, I don't know if we have like a lot to report on, but I think that it, it will probably be an item soon because I think if we can get a little bit more development, I think we kind of had some question marks after our last meeting, but I think at some point it would be nice for the committee to be more involved with. Right. Maybe what? we can generate some ideas that can turn into some sort of reality. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. I, another thing I just wanted to, I'd like to put on the list to think about um, is when we were at that um, future forward, what was it called? Forward. Uh, Journey to the Future. Journey to the Future event. It was like we were sitting on this big open space and people just coming up and talking to us and I was just there for like an hour and a half, but it was just really hit me just how many people approached me because I had a name tag on and I was behind the booth mm -hmm. and they really were like, how do I get connected? How do I, I'm an artist. I want to know other artists. I mean, it really felt like, obviously it was a small little piece of the, you know, thing, but I, I feel like there's something there. Like we talked to some people from Petaluma and they had a much more kind of organic. They said they had like, they were located it didn't sound like it's the same organization as us. They didn't get that vibe. Mm -hmm. But they were near like a lot of gathering spots and people just rolled in. And I just thought, what if we had a little more facing forward, we showed up to different. I mean, I'm not going to solve it right now. I'm just saying the idea that we would be places and say, artists come to our booths. You know, we want to meet you, we want to know you. Um, I don't know what we do with that information. I don't know. And we can't promise. A lot of people think they're going to get us get their friend connected if they give us their name. It was like, well, it's not quite how it works, but um, I am sensitive to that, especially coming out of COVID. Could we provide another lens or place for people to engage and be known? So I just want to put it on the maybe rather than just objects, we could be about people to community. I was, um, I was uh, uh, involved with actually a founding board member and then um, ultimately executive director of an arts council years ago that would do a quarterly, I'll call it a mixer since people yeah, kind of know exactly. what that is, but um, we, we call it the art, artist connection and, and it was for any, you know, anybody who is a creative, you know, not mm -hmm. just visual, but you know, musicians and right. And so um, it was just like a quarterly gathering. And um, in that case, there was a, a board member who had like a really cool warehouse space, so we would just do it in space. But um, I mean, I could probably offer them. Oh, it's a really cool space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I could, yeah. 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 You have it also. You have it. Yeah, I mean, we could, you know, I could offer the museum. It's, you know, after, when we were going through um, our community connection, gathering, collaboration process mm -hmm. post 2017 wildfires, we we hosted a series of um, gatherings at, at the museum, which was really about collaboration and mm -hmm. response. 
the wildfires, but then it became sort of this movable feast, right? It yeah. started with us and then ended up going to yeah. other locations um, around the city. Well, actually around the county. And that's point. what I, I'm told. But, I don't think we want to be like having to be responsible for everyone, but it's yeah. like allowing, a, yeah, creating yeah. an environment where people can kind of make some more connections. Well, it's interesting because I, I had proposed to Kristen Madsen that um, Creative Sonoma be sort of the organizing sponsor of such, uh, you know, be, because I thought, oh, you know, it should be more than the museum. You know, we're yeah. one organization, but it should be something that have. But if we, because we don't have an arts council per se in Santa Rosa, maybe this is the organization that could kind of, you know, we, we could be sort of an organizer. Um, even if it can move moved around, and it doesn't have to be every week or every month, but no. it could be. But know, yeah, at least on some sort of on some kind of schedule. Yeah, um, maybe that's something we can add into the conversation about the task forces because I think the engagement task force could be mm -hmm. the spearheaders of, of organizing yeah. a series of oh, yeah. those types of events. But what happened to the Arts Council? Oh, they kind of went under and dissolved. Gosh, what was that like 2012, 13? Oh, okay. Something like that. Was it even earlier than that? I, I can't remember. Um, there were several issues, kind of, I think, with their organization, but they just they couldn't mm -hmm. make it happen anymore. So, yeah. their some of their programs, such as Art Trails, yeah. got picked up by other organizations. So, Art Trails now lives within the Sebastopol Center for the Arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As that does art Artists at the source, which is interesting right. that they oversee both. It's been hard, I think, for them. To I'll bet. Make it all work. I mean, I, I ran San Francisco Open Studios for a few years, and like running an open studio event is a, which is really tough. <laughs> Okay, so does that go on a list or something when I just said, is that how it works? Yeah, right. yeah but, um, <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I think that, yes, okay. I think it's a good item to put on the list, but I also think it can be yeah. wrapped into you other items. Excellent. Yeah, good. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Attitude. And from earlier, we'll put the the uh, DX session yeah. on the uh, oh, yeah. future agenda. Too. Yeah, I would like that, yeah, totally. Yeah. I was thinking about that DX session. I was like, we kept think, I kept thinking about it as we stopped talking, but it could... It'd be interesting. The absence of it could have interesting growth of something else mm -hmm. too, which would reflect that sort of sense. I don't know. It's very interesting. Okay, great. All right. Anything else, people? I'm going to close that we um, adjourn, and the next meeting is going to be July 3rd. It's not a holiday. <laughs> that Monday, so don't be right yeah, at because so it feels like it is. <laughs> yes. I'm wondering, sure. if, uh -huh. if, does anyone here know that they will be available to attend the meeting that day? Because we will have agenda items if we can get it for them. So Which day? July uh, 3rd. The day before the 4th. Yeah, the, oh, that, right. that holiday. A lot of people are going to take it like a four-day weekend. Right. Thing. Yeah, That's what we're that, asking. That could be a tough. Yeah, That's I'll be here. I, I I know I will be, but anyone else know they're going to not or I don't know. I don't know for sure. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, um, probably near the end of June, we'll send out a little. No, absolutely. Like, yeah. like a uh, what poll type thing. Like, will mm -hmm. it be here? Yes or no? Yes. So that we, yeah, we can check the quorum <laughs> okay. ahead of time. Yep. Okay. 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 Right. The meeting is adjourned. Thank All you. Right.